you are entering into a place of alternate scientific reality. Your next stop, NephilimFree.com. That's right, Nephilim Free has a website now. Just a quick update first. Nephilim Free has declined my debate challenge because I don't have enough subscribers. So unless I somehow get a few thousand subscribers, I'm probably not going to be debating them. Anyway, today we will be looking at his article, Nylonase Bacteria, Product of Intelligent Design. Evolutionists claim Nylonase Bacteria are an example of evolution. They're in fact an astounding example of intelligent dewine. Read the article to learn more. For those of you who don't know, Nephilim Free is referring to bacteria which evolved to digest waste products from Nylon Factory in Japan. The bacteria had to evolve the new enzyme, which is attributed to a gene duplication followed by a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation occurs when a nucleotide is deleted or inserted into a protein coding region in DNA. What occurs can be illustrated with this sentence. If a letter is deleted or inserted, the H from what, for example, the result will be a shift in the reading frame by one letter. Frame shifts are usually harmful, but in this case, the bacteria depends on it to survive. Now let's look at what Nephilim Free claims. A mutation is a change in the DNA molecule. It may be caused by either random mechanical molecular mistakes, or by programming in the DNA, which causes a change in the translation of genetic information. Many evolutionists have since been claiming that a random frame shift mutation was the cause of the protein as a way of sidestepping the discovery of the existence of programmed translational frame shift mutation, which produce novel proteins which have specific functions for cells. In other words, Nephilim Free is attributing this to intelligent design. Before I show why Nephilim Free is wrong, first recognize that throughout the article, Nephilim Free is practically admitting that this is an example of a gain in information. In other words, if this is the result of evolution, by his admission, this is an example of an increase in information through evolution. I'm sure any biologist watching this will get a good laugh out of Nephilim Free's illustration of a translational frame shift. Alternate splicing is basically just different ways of cutting RNA. Not only is this a pre-translational process, which has nothing to do with translational frame shifting, splicing only occurs in eukaryotes, not prokaryotes like bacteria. That said, translational frame shifts are real. What happens is a ribosome which translates mRNA into proteins slips rarely during translation, resulting in a frame shift. The likelihood of this occurring can be increased by a sequence which is prone to slipping, and you could potentially use such a sequence to, to promote a translational frame shift. There are, however, several problems with this explanation. First of all, the enzyme with the frame shift is not the only enzyme which evolved here. There are actually two different enzymes which evolved, which if he read the paper that he cited, he would have known about. This separate enzyme, as far as I'm aware, does not result from a frame shift, so its explanation already fails. Another thing to consider is the sequence of DNA. Nephilim Free claims, Initially, it was assumed that a frame shift mutation was the cause of the nylon protein capable of breaking down nylon. But investigation turned up no such frame shift event by examining the DNA of the bacteria. However, in 1984, it was discovered that just such a mutation was the cause of amino acid sequence which produced the protein. Interestingly, he doesn't provide any sources for the claim that the frame shift event was not discovered in DNA. The source he does provide from 1984, of which it appears he has only read the abstract, actually shows the sequence of plasmid. The insertion marked by the arrow shows where thymine, represented by T, was inserted into the sequence causing the frame shift. A ribosome cannot cause such a change to the DNA, so obviously this explanation fails. 
The final problem is that if this bacteria isn't caused by evolution, the sequence would already be in the mRNA and we would have the enzyme already in the bacteria before the introduction to the nylon waste. This clearly is not the case. So in conclusion, Nephilim Free can no longer say information does not increase in the genome. Thanks for watching.